Hello, it's Scott Manley here with another one of these uh, lessons in orbital mechanics. We're going to go back and we're going to talk about escape velocity using this velocity equation, if you remember. This is the orbital velocity equation that we came up with. V squared is equal to 2 mu over, uh, sorry, mu times 2 over r minus 1 over a. And if you remember, mu is equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of the central body. And uh, r and a come from an ellipse, your elliptical orbit, right, where your body is here, right, so your r is the distance you are from the center of mass, and a is half this distance here, right, so that's 2a here, right, that's called the semi-major axis. Now, to reach escape velocity, you have to get out to infinity, so naively, you would say that means that A would have to be infinite, otherwise, you know, you're stuck on this ellipse. So, let's substitute A equals infinity, right, to this equation. And what do you get? Well, you get that V squared escape is equal to 2 mu over R. And the reason is, if you put infinity under there, 1 divided by infinity is 0. Actually, you can't really do that, but it tends towards zero, right? And mathematicians are, of course, telling me all about infinities right now and how I'm glossing over things. Now, this is a, an interesting, very simple number. If you go back to the first lesson, we talked about circular velocity, where r is equal to a, and we that was a circular velocity, so we would get v circ uh, is equal to mu over r, right, in a circular orbit. So immediately, you see that uh, velocity of escape is equal to root 2 times the velocity circular. That's kind of convenient. Uh, root 2, incidentally, is about 1.414 something something. So more or less, if you get about 41.4% more velocity then your circular orbit, you can reach escape velocity and get off to infinity and uh, never come back. So, hypo r roughly, uh, in a low Earth orbit, you know, V uh, circ VC uh, is roughly 7.7 .7 kilometers per second, you know, that's about just over 300 kilometer orbit. So that would mean that velocity of Earth escape would be about 10.9. 9 kilometers per second, and that was sky in the background. <laughs> so, to get to uh, escape velocity, dv, delta v escape, is, is basically this minus this, which is about 3.2 kilometers per second. Now, You've just escaped Earth. What do you do next? Well, say you want to go to Mars, right? Well, we can calculate this in a, another episode. But uh, the delta V to uh, go from Earth to Mars is about uh, roughly 3 kilometers per second. And you might naively think that you just add these together and you get your total dV total is about 6.2. Right, kilometers per second. Uh, and that would be correct if you did it in a horrendously inefficient way, but it's not the way that real spacecraft do it. The real way you do it is you get all your excess velocity so that when, uh, uh, in low Earth orbit, when you're performing your escape burn, and uh, then you carry some of that excess energy off to infinity. So let's imagine that we are at infinity and rewrite our velocity equation. What do we have? V squared at infinity is equal to mu times 2 over, well, r is infinity, so that's, you know, that's a non-parameter, minus 1 over a. So, that's equals to mu over a. So that means if you have uh, excess energy at infinity, then a has to be less than zero. And at this point, you look back at this diagram and say, well, wait a second, how does negative uh, semi-major axis work in that case? Well, it doesn't. You're on a hyperbolic orbit, and this is really a patched, con this is a conic section, and just be happy and say that A is less than zero when you exceed escape velocity, and you will be happy for now. Okay, so, observing that V infinity is equal to minus mu over A, Let's find out how fast you have to be going at velocity r, right, vr, 
uh, is again is equal to mu times 2 over r. Well, uh, let's just do that, times 1 over a. Right, let's come back to this equation. How fast do you have to be going to be going at v infinity? Well, guess what? This term is a escape velocity, right? So vr squared is equal to v escape squared minus, oh, look, mu over a is equal to v infinity. V, how much in vo So that's how much velocity you need at radius r is equal to the escape velocity uh, or how much, yeah, uh, sorry, plus sign, that, <laughs> we're getting confused here a second, the velocity you need at radius r is equal to the escape velocity squared plus the velocity you need at infinity squared. So uh, this is very convenient because, say we're doing this escape at 7 point, you know, at uh, 300 or something kilometers, right? So v r squared is equal to 10.9 squared plus 3 squared. Well, you can do this in a calculator very quickly. I'll give you a second. But more or less, it says that VR is equal to 11.3. So 11.3 is only 411.3 kilometers per second is only 400 meters per second faster than escape velocity. So we've gone from 6.2 kilometers per second down to uh, 3.4, uh, 3.6 kilometers per second. So that is the delta V you need to escape from Earth and then be going fast enough to pass, uh, to escape from the Earth and end up on an orbit going towards Mars. This is why you should do your escape burns in low Kerbin orbit when you're playing Kerbal Space Program. This is also why you should avoid doing lunar gravity assists to escape into interplanetary space, because if you do this, right, if you do a lunar gravity assist, then you might save a little bit on this, you know, 3.2 kilometers per second. If you, if you did this around Earth, you might save a little bit on this, but you wouldn't save it on this. And you can see that this is really dominating, right? What happens is this term is so big that the actual delta V you need is very small. Another way to look at it, incidentally, is to imagine this is a Pythagoras triangle, a right angle triangle, right? And this is the delta V, and this is your V escape, and uh, this is the V at infinity. Look, uh, when this is small, you actually get a huge benefit from large escape. And similarly, yeah. Uh, you know, if you if you're as you get higher and higher, the benefit becomes less. Once your, uh, once your escape, once your escape velocity, your in infinite velocity, is comparable to your escape velocity, the benefit is a lot smaller, but it is still there. Now, incidentally, if you can get really close, the closer the limit limitation to this is how close you can get to the parent body. And if you can get really close, then you can get huge amounts of excess velocity. So, you know, black holes. Very convenient place to pick up a lot of speed. You're essentially dumping uh, energy in there. This is something like the Oberth effect, incidentally, uh, because the closer you get, the higher velocity you have, the faster, the, the less energy you need to spend to get that excess uh, velocity at infinity. So, this is the equation that is important, right? The velocity you need at R is equal to the escape velocity squared plus the velocity at infinity. The other important equation is the escape velocity is equal to 2 mu over r or root 2 times v over uh, v circuit, root 2 times circular velocity. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.